The Galaxy S23 is coming. It's the latest in a long line of phones that have almost always been among the best you can buy in any particular year. The default Android phone for anyone not buying an iPhone. And in 2023, it looks like being a dependable, safe upgrade across the board once again, while still tempting buyers with a selection of camera and efficiency improvements, especially if you live in Europe and especially if you're going for the Ultra. But since Samsung switched to its three model strategy with small, big and really big versions, it's been easy for enthusiasts like me and probably you to overlook all but the Ultra. After all, that's the model that replaced the Galaxy Note and stands as the most impressive and the most expensive non-folding phone that Samsung can make. Samsung has drifted towards having the Ultra as its iPhone 14 Pro Max equivalent, and then the Galaxy S and S Plus being more of your standard iPhone 14. Still perfectly fine phones, just not all that interesting. So if you want the very best of Samsung, you've got to go big, and in 2023 it seems that is no exception. So let's take a look at what we're expecting from the S23 series in general and that top tier S23 Ultra specifically. It's a big year for Samsung phones, but in kind of a low key way. So take a sec to subscribe to XDA TV and we'll jump in what we know so far and what it means for you as a phone buying human. Let's jump in. To start with, I hope you like the look of the Galaxy S22 series because that's basically what's been continued in the S23. Around back, according to leaked CAD renders from the ever-reliable OnLeaks, the corner wedge-shaped camera bulge is gone in the S23 and S22 Plus, instead replaced with three protruding lenses a la S22 Ultra. Otherwise, very few cosmetic changes here, and the main visual distinctions will probably depend on Samsung's choice of colors. Screen size has looked to remain the same 6.1 and 6.6 .6 inches for the S23 and the Plus respectively, but according to Chinese leaker and screen-to-body ratio enthusiast Ice Universe, the small S22's footprint is actually slightly larger than last year's, suggesting potentially larger bezels. And for the Ultra, the rear is almost identical, once again boasting that internal S Pen. There are only a few tiny changes to the layout of the rear cameras, according to leaked CAD renders. Screen borders, according to Ice Universe, will be ever so slightly narrower, and the curve of the display will be less pronounced. But as a regular user, unless you're breaking out your microscope to examine the new Ultra next to the current one, I seriously doubt you're going to notice any of this. The fact these S23s look so similar on the outside though, doesn't mean Samsung won't necessarily improve the quality of the displays. The Ultra always has the company's latest and greatest, and there's still room for the other two models to improve as well, perhaps with the addition of an LTPO panel. These are the new, more efficient OLED screens that can clock down as low as 1Hz to save power. But now, the really big change, especially for those of us outside the US. The Galaxy S23 series will use the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 processor worldwide. Qualcomm's new chip announced very recently both impressive performance and efficiency gains over the current 8 Gen 1. And you'll probably see it in every 2023 flagship that doesn't have either an Apple or a big G logo on the back. In previous years, you typically have Snapdragon for the US, China and other parts of Asia, and Exynos for Europe. So it's a big deal and it's been a long time coming. In recent years, benchmarks and side-by-side -side testing has shown time and time again Exynos models struggling to keep up with the equivalent Snapdragon chips. Some years, the difference in battery life in particular has been pretty stark, and it's been galling for Europeans who've been stuck with these inferior chips, while Galaxy owners in the US and China pay the same for better performance. While on paper the S23's processor will be branded just like any other Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, recent reports suggest that Samsung will in fact be getting a slightly higher clocked version of the chip built in-house by Samsung Foundry. That's as opposed to the standard 8 Gen 2 which is built by Taiwan's TSMC. In practice, I wouldn't expect this to make any noticeable difference besides the bragging rights, but in theory the S23 should have higher peak performance. Meanwhile, RAM is set to stay the same for the S23 and the Plus at a base 8GB. That's not totally surprising considering Samsung has appeared to want to keep costs lower for these two models. No word on the Ultra yet, though I am hoping for the base model to get a bump up to a nice 12 gigs of RAM really seems like table stakes for a phone as expensive as this thing will likely be. Either way, if you're coming from any previous Exynos Galaxy phone, the S23 series should offer a smoother performance with noticeably better battery life. And given the generational improvements between the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 and Gen 2, there should be a meaningful battery boost there too. And that should be helped along by a bigger battery, at least in the smaller S23. Unconfirmed reports from a couple places suggest a modest bump up to a 3900mAh cell for that model. No word on the plus, but the Ultra is expected to remain at its current 5000mAh capacity. But still, even if there are no battery capacity upgrades for the larger two, the more efficient SoC should make a big difference to everyday longevity. 
Another potentially big change for battery life is the light mode, believed to be coming in the new One UI 5.1. This is different to the current battery saving mode, which limits the max screen brightness and cuts down on things like app syncing in the background. Light mode appears to keep the phone running as normal, but manages CPU speed to prioritize battery life over raw performance. For everyday tasks, the idea is you won't notice any difference except for your battery going a little further. And this shouldn't affect games either, because gaming performance will continue to be handled by the existing game manager. I've wanted something like this for a long time, a sensible midway choice between the current all or nothing approach to battery saver on most phones. So this is really great to see. Samsung has made the camera one of the tentpole features in its Ultra phones, and it's still the only major phone maker offering a dual 3x plus 10x optical zoom. As a result, the versatility of the S22 Ultra is really hard to beat. So where do you go from there in the S23 Ultra? Well, most of the reliable leaks are pointing to a new 200 megapixel main camera, long rumored but apparently finally coming in 2023. It'll reportedly be a 1 over 1.3 inch sensor, so not quite as large as the 1 inch sensor used by some Chinese brands, and packing an f4.7 aperture and 0.6 micron pixel size. Ice Universe also reports it'll have 12, 50, and 200 megapixel shooting modes, so yeah, if it can actually output an image of 16,000 by 12,000 pixels, this is going to be pretty wild to see. Based on the leaks so far, we're not expecting to see huge changes to the two telephoto cameras, both of which look set to remain at 10 megapixels, though it's possible Samsung could use the output from the larger main sensor to enhance images from its two telephotos. Google is already doing this on its Pixel 7 Pro with lesser camera hardware, and it makes a big difference, especially in lower light. What might also help nighttime zoom shots is the wider aperture for the 10x telephoto. According to leaked EXIF data from shots taken with this camera, it'll reportedly get a bump up to f4.4 from the previous f4.9. As for the other two S23s, so far the leaks suggest no major camera hardware improvements compared to the S22. A little disappointing perhaps, but once again, look at Google's Pixel 7 series, which offers only modest hardware upgrades from the previous generation, but makes up the difference in processing and features. It's very possible Samsung could have the same software tricks up its sleeve for its smaller 2023 flagships. One slightly left of field addition, possibly for the S23 Ultra, is satellite communication support. This has just launched in select territories for the iPhone 14 Pro, so it's no surprise to see Samsung following suit here. And if there's any company besides Apple with the clout and financial firepower to make big deals with satellite providers, it's Samsung. In a deal reportedly two years in the making, Samsung has partnered with Iridium Communications, a firm with a network of 66 low Earth orbit satellites. Like the iPhone, it's likely this last ditch means of communications would be used in emergencies only in areas outside of regular cell coverage. Samsung satellite plans that reportedly could expand beyond text messaging and into areas like voice calls and even low res picture messaging. Given the expenses involved, though, you could probably expect this feature to be limited to the S23 Ultra and likely to carry some sort of extra monthly fee. So that's what we know so far about the Galaxy S23 series. For the S23 Ultra, it's a meaningful update to Samsung's iPhone 14 Pro Max Challenger. It's all about the battery life, thanks to that more efficient chip, RIP Exynos, and the camera with that impressive new 200 megapixel sensor. In a lot of countries outside China, Samsung doesn't really have any meaningful Android competition at the high end, and these upgrades should go a long way to keeping it on the top spot. But equally, it'll be interesting to see how the S23 Ultra compares with the cheaper and still very good Pixel 7 Pro and new challenges like Honor in Europe, which will be looking to fill the gap in that market left by Huawei. And then there's Xiaomi, whose 13 Ultra will be launching in Europe as well, though with a much smaller market presence there. That phone could beat the S23 Ultra on paper in terms of specs and charging speeds, but is unlikely to come close in terms of sales. Meanwhile, we see the cheaper 2S23 models settling into sort of an iPhone 14 and 14 Plus pattern, with fewer upgrades year to year, while still being phones that are decent and dependable for most people, though arguably a bit boring for enthusiasts. The new Galaxy S phones will reportedly break cover during the first week of February, likely putting them on store shelves before the end of that month. We'll have full coverage of the new Galaxies as they launch and reviews coming up shortly afterwards, so be sure to subscribe to XDA TV, smash the bell, ring the button, and all that good stuff. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.